Bibles with you this morning. We're going to be in the book of Joel, chapter 2. We're going to start reading verse 12 through 27. Uh, Joel is one of the minor prophets, but it's not minor because of what it says. It's minor because it's short in length. Uh, all of God's Word is major. So, uh, you know, they label them as major and minor prophets, but I tell you, nothing in the, in the Word of God is minor. Uh, and like I said, we're going to be talking today about it's not too late. And we're going to be in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 12 through 27. And we're going to go ahead and read our verses. It says, Therefore, therefore also now said the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments. Turn unto your Lord, uh, the Lord your God, for He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth Him of the evil. Who knoweth if He will return and repent, and leave a, a blessing behind Him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call it a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and, and those that, that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth of the chamber, and let the bride out of her closet. Let the priest, let, let the priest, the minister of the Lord, weep between the, the porches and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy her heritage to reproach, and the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his hand and, and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn. And wine and, and olive, and you shall be uh, satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among heathens, but I will remove far from you, from you the northern army, and we will will drive them into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea, and his uh, hinder parts toward the utmost sea, and this and his stink shall come up, and his uh, ill savor shall come up, because he has done great things. Fear not, O Lord. I mean, fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the, the wilderness do spring, for the trees bear her fruit, and the fig trees and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord uh, your excuse me, the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain uh, moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat uh, shall overflow with wine and, and oil. And I will restore you the, uh, the year that the locusts had eaten the, the canker worm and the, the caterpillar and the uh, palmer worm. My great army will I send among you, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wonderfully with, with you and my, my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Let us pray. Give most kind, gracious heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, I just pray you just be with us today as, uh, as we uh, get into your word. Father, I just pray that you just anoint me. Lord, just give me the word to speak. I might glorify you in each and everything I say. Uh, but Lord, I just pray that you prayer hearts receive your word, Father. I, I don't know each and every need of the people, Father, but you do, Lord, and I just pray that you just minister to them, Lord, and I just pray that your will be done in every situation, Father, for it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. 
Again, uh, I want to talk to you about it's not too late. You know, the, the nation of Israel, as we read the scripture, they're in constant, uh, in a constant struggle with their enemies. And, and their enemies are coming in, they're, they're facing famine, uh, there's a massive drought that comes in, they're having invasions from enemy armies coming in, invading them, and the, the land has fallen into ruins, uh, and the people are demoralized. And the prophet Joe, he uses these events to excuse me. He uses these events to to illustrate God's judgment upon Israel. You see, the simple fact is, Israel has sinned against God, and all these things are coming against them through the judgment hand of God. You know, in the book of Joe, it, it does not name the suspicious. Sus Specific sin uh, that they had committed, but that ain't funny, Bill. <laughs> uh, that they had committed, but the simple fact is, we know that they had sinned against God. If you read the book very carefully, you will see that they had got away from God. They had got complacent with the things of God. They were apathetic about the things of God. And that's why God is, is brought them under the, the hand of judgment. He's trying to, to draw them back to Him. See, when, when God brings judgment on something, it's not to destroy it, it's to bring His people back to Him. He was trying to bring the nation of Israel back into a place that God wanted them to be. They had got away from God. They had sought the things of the world. And now God is using this divine judgment to move them back to Him. You know, the book of Job, not only is it a book of judgment, but it's also a book of hope. See, the thing is, we have hope because, the, and the people of Israel have hope because all they have to do, even in the midst of this judgment, this divine judgment from God, all they have to do is turn to God. And He'll remove all those things and He'll start blessing His people again. Uh, you know, the book of Job is, is, I know it's written to the, the Jewish nation, and it tells about their, their past and it tells about their future. You know, he talks about their past sins that they're in judgment for now. But he's saying, hey, there's a time in the future if you turn back to me that God, I, I'm going to pour out my blessing on you again. And you know, while the book is written to the Jewish nation, it still has something for us here today. Because I tell you, if you look all around us as a nation, I tell you, the United States has fallen under the judgment hand of God because of the simple fact of the way we're living, the things we're doing. Look at all the sin that is out there in the world. And it's not just for lost people. Our churches have even got away from God. And they're out there living and looking just like the lost. And God says, that's not what He wants for us. So what does God have for us in the, in the book of Job? Job. You know, I want to talk to you today, even though our nation is in a bad place, even though our church is in a bad place, even though spiritually each individual were in a bad place, the thing is, I want you to know that there's hope. There's hope for the future. It's not too late. And that's what I want to preach on this morning about it's not too late. It's not too late for a nation. It's not too, too late for our churches. And it's not too late for us as individuals to get back to where God wants us to be. Amen. First of all, we see in the Scripture today that there was a problem that the nation of Israel was facing. First of all, they were facing devastation. Like I told you, they had one insect invasion after another. The locusts had came in and it was destroying their crops. It had got to, it wasn't just one time, it was time after time. And the thing is, they didn't have any food that they were a nation starving to death. They didn't have food. It, you know, we talked about bringing offers. They didn't even have any offers to bring. They had nothing to bring to God because it got so bad. But we also see that not only was they facing devastation, but they were also facing destruction. You know, their enemies that were all around them, the, the, the neighboring nations, God was using them to come in and to, to exact judgment on His people. You know, when, when they would come in, not only would they, they break and kill, but they would also destroy their orchards and they would destroy all the stuff that they had, their vineyards that they had for grapes. Uh, and you know, these people seem like they were too strong to stop. They were very uh, numerous. It was a lot of these, these nations coming in. But 
The thing is, God would, could take care of those. He could stop them. Secondly, they faced desolation. Not only did they have locusts coming in and armies coming in and them, it was also a, a stream drought. It's, it was so bad, the drought was so bad, it said that not only the, the, the crops were ruined, but even the animals they had. They had no water, no pasture. If you got that bad, they didn't have anything to eat. It said even the animals were dying. It was nothing there for them. That's how bad it got. But not only that, it also said that fire broke out. And it destroyed the, even destroyed the forest. Can, can you see what's going on? God is totally pouring out His wrath on the nation of Israel because of their sin. And He's doing it to try to get them to move back to Him. But they're also facing discipline. You know, none of these things that we read about in Scripture here were done for no reason. They were done for the reason of God's divine judgment on them to bring them back to Him. You know, every single tragedy that, that gripped the nation of Israel, it was by the hand of God that we see here. You know, I, I, there's one thing about judgment that fell on them. It reminds us as a nation and a church that we need to turn back to God. Amen. Because we need to turn to Him before any more falls under us. You know, I think that we're under the judgment of the hand of God right now. Amen. Think about this. How many, any other time in history did you ever remember natural disasters happen as much as they are now? You know, it seems like every time I turn on the TV, it's a new hurricane coming through Florida or through somewhere, or it's tornadoes coming through. Uh, just unbelievable what's doing. Uh, billions and billions of dollars worth of damage. Uh, you know, I never thought I would live in a time where there would be food shortages. But we do. I mean, even in Trinity, there's been points through all of this, this COVID and stuff that we would go in there and the shelves would look like they were almost completely empty. I never thought I would see that during my time of living. But it's happened. And it's because of, of the sin that is in our nation. Amen. You know, consider this. Consider how sin runs rampant in our nation. Look at how the people are living nowadays. All you got to do is turn on the news and you see all the things. People are being beaten to death in the street for no reason. Uh, people are saying that uh, you can live any lifestyle you want. You can be anything you want. All these things are... As a nation, we become a nation that says that evil is good and good is evil. You know, like the Bible says. Uh, but the thing is, God doesn't want us to live like that. We become a nation that's got away from the things of God. Right. And it's not just a nation. We've done it in our churches too. We've got away from the things of God. And God is saying that we need to come back. We need to come back to Him and have a desire to do the things that He wants us to do. You know, God wants us to live in a way that we glorify Him each right. and every day of our lives. You know, if you go to the churches nowadays, if you flip the TV on, look at the churches on TV, churches become a place where they replace the preaching of God's Word with praise songs. You know, I, I turned the TV on and looked at some preaching on there, and it's like a concert. I've been to other churches. You go in, and it's like a concert. It's no emphasis on preaching the Word of God. It's, it's become all about making people feel good about your sin. You know, we want you to come in and we want to, we want to make you feel good. And that way you can leave and, and come back. You know, we want you to come back. But see, I tell you, that's doing you no good unless we preach the Word of God and the power of conviction comes over you, it's doing no good for you to be here. Amen. See, the, thing, the simple fact is, the purpose for people to come to God's house and hear God's Word preached is for God to break conviction on because we all have sin in our life. It's things that we need to deal with. It's things that separate us from the Spirit of God. You know, the fact is, God doesn't want us to live that way. And God wants us to come back to Him. He wants His churches to start being the places that they need to be. You know, the church has got nowadays more people they rather play than to pray. Yeah. You know, we have a lifeline to God, but we don't use it like we should. We'd rather get out and play in the world and do the things of the world. See, the 
Church should be where when the Word of God is preached, people search their heart. Amen. Where the lost are saved, people search their heart to find out what God needs from them and what God wants from them. But not only that, first of all, we don't only see their problem, but we also see their pleasure. You know, even though they were experiencing uh, the judgment of God, God's telling them there's still hope, and all they have to do as a nation is turn back to God. You know, that seems pretty simple. First of all, God tells them that the plea is for, first of all, repentance. And I'm talking about genuine, genuine repentance. You know, he tells them, he said, I want you to turn to me with all your heart. See, that's truly serving God. When you put away the th all the things of the world behind you and you turn to God 100% with all your heart. And he also says, rend your heart and not your clothes. You know, people would do that back in those days. They'd rip their clothes for appearance. God said, hey, we don't want the appearance of religion. We want heart changing relationship with God. That's what God wants. He doesn't want us to... to Fake it to go through the motion. God really wants us to really come back to Him. See, God wants us to be a people that are broken about our sin. That's right. And that's the way we should be as Christian people. We should be broken about our sin. Because God died of Jesus died on the cross for all our sins. And, and we repent of that. And we ask Him to save us. And then we bring all the sin back into our life and it separates us from the relationship that we have our, our fellowship with God. See, God wants us to have a close walk and fellowship with Him each and every day of our lives. It was the same thing He was wanting with the nation of Israel. He was wanting a close fellowship. He was wanting to be their God and them to be His, His people. That's what He was wanting. But they kept following false gods. They kept getting away from God. And that's the way we're doing as a nation today. But God said, if we're going to get back to who we need to be, we need true repentance. Amen. That's what we need as a nation. We need to repent of the lifestyles that we live. Because God doesn't want us. We're supposed to be a, a holy people. That's God called us out to be holy, to be sanctified, to be separate. He wants to separate us and we'd be different from all other people. You know, when people look at us as Christians, they want to be able to tell without you coming up and saying, hey, I'm brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. They want to know by just looking at you and the things you do and how you act that you're a child of God. That's what he's saying. And until we get back to a point where we repent and get back to God, God's not going to fix things. We're going to stay in that thing. Also, there was a plea for restoration. I have a problem with these R's. I should have picked a different uh, thing today. Uh, you know, God calls all these people here in Scripture from the oldest uh, to the youngest to, to come back to Him. He even says the priest need to come back to Him. He calls all these people. He wants them to have a burning desire for Him. He wants them to be hungry for the things of God. You know, like I said before, in verse 16, he talks about sanctify yourself. You know, that means to be separate, to be holy, to be consecrated, to be dedicated. See, he wants us to, to get back to him. Draw back nigh to God, because that's what we need to be. We need to have that close fellowship with him. You know, but we live in a, a generation today that that's abandoned the things of God. They don't care about the things of God. You know, but people need to read the place where we put God first in our priorities. You know, we're so worried about the things of the world, we put our, our, worldly, our worldly things ahead of the things of God. But see, we need to put God first in our life. Not just on Sunday morning, not just on Wednesday night, but every single day of our life, every decision we make, we need to put God first in our life. That's what God wants. But not only do we see his plea, but we shall also see in verses uh, 18 through 27 uh, the promises of God. You know, he, he promises them, first of all, he promises them restoration. You know, if, if God said that if they come back to him, he would deliver them from all that they're facing. Every single thing that they are going through, he will restore them. He'll restore all their food. Uh, he'll restore all their crops. He'll do all that. He'll restore every single thing that they've lost. 
You know, that's what's so beautiful about the God we serve. You know, no matter how far we get out there and sin, all we got to do is come back to Him and repent. And He'll restore us back to who we were before. You know, that's, that's amazing uh, that He does that. And that's what He's telling uh, the nation of Israel here. But not only that, He also promised them a revival. You know, I tell you, He tells them here in Scripture, He said, I'm going to restore both the former and the latter rain. See, the, the former rain fell in October, at the end of October, November. It, what it would do, it would get the ground ready and for the next year's crop. And then for the latter rain, it would fall in, in April, and right in April, May. And what it would do, it would make sure that the crops they were about to get was going to be bountiful. God was blessing them. He was pouring out the rain on them, and it was where well, they would grow, and they would have a really good harvest. And he said, hey, I promise that I'm going to restore this. I'm going to revive you. I'm going to bring you back to the people that you are, that you should be. You know, and that's what we need today. First of all, as a nation, we need, we need a, a nation needs to be revived. Not only that, but also as a church. I mean, we live in a day and age where, you know, it used to be holy men of God that, that came and got the pulpit, pulpit, pulpits and they preach the Word of God. And they preach it with conviction and power. But we got away from that. Now, like I told you before, we, the pulpit is full of people that just want to make you feel good about yourself. They want to make you happy, make you feel a little good when you'll come back and uh, visit us again. But I tell you, if that's all I do up here is just try to make you feel better about yourself and your sin, I've done you a disservice. See, it's my job as a minister here to preach the gospel message. Amen. Preach Jesus on the cross first. Amen. That's what I'm supposed to be preaching. That people might be saved. People might be changed. People might give their heart to Christ and, and come into our churches and get on fire for God and help us do the work of God here at Willow Grove Baptist Church. That's what God wants. He also promised, had a promise of rejoicing. You know, he's saying, I'm going to bless you in such a way if you come back to me that when I start pouring all my blessings out upon you, you, you ain't going to be able to do nothing but rejoice. I tell you, I want to feel that again. I want to feel God pouring His Spirit out on the church. Before. All we can do is say, hey, God did that. And it's a time of rejoicing and a time of blessing. See, God wants to bless His people. But the reason we're not receiving those blessings today is because of the sin that's in our lives. It's in our churches, it's in our nation, but it's also in us individually. We have sin in our life. And we need to repent and get back to that where God can revive us and He can bless us again and we can be living like God wants us to live. Lastly, He also promised them the promise of realization. You know, He said He was going to bless them so much when people see Him that they're going to realize, hey, God has come back and He's among His people. You know, that's what I want, that's what I want people to say about Willow Grove Baptist Church. I want them, when they see what we're doing out here at Willow Grove, we're, we're preaching the gospel, I want them to say, hey, God is among His people down there at Willow Grove. That's what we all ought to want. We all ought to want the things of God in our lives. Amen. We ought to have a fire and a desire to live a holy life for God and do the things of God. You know, I, I told you before, this is a book of hope. You know, a lot of people think, well, this is just a book of judgment. God pouring out His judgment on the nation of Israel. But it's not just a book of judgment. It's a book of hope. Right. He's saying, as long as you draw a fleeting breath and the Spirit of God is still dealing with you, there's always hope. Amen. It's never too late. Amen. And I say to you today, in closing, it's never too late for you. It's never too late for us as a nation to turn back to God. It's never too late to, uh, for us as a church to turn back to God. But I say to you individually, I tell you, it's never too late for you to turn to God. You know, see, the whole purpose of us meeting here and preaching the Word of God is that the lost might be saved. Amen. See, that's what we're here for for the lost people to come to God. Right. So 
So I tell you today, if you're here today and you're lost and you don't know Christ as Lord and Savior, it's not too late for you. As long as the Spirit of God is dealing with you and you feel that convicting power of God, all you have to do is step out in faith and trust Him. But I say to you as a church, if you're here today and you've got sin in your life, it's not too late for you either. It's not too late to turn back to God and get back to where God wants us to be as a nation, as a church, and as individuals. Because for it. You most kind gracious heavenly Father, Lord, I'm so thankful for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, I just pray that you just be with us today, Lord, in this invitation. If there's anyone here that don't know you as Lord and Savior, today will be that day they choose you for several last too late, Father. We thank you, we love you, and we praise you. It's your Christ's name I pray. Amen. Praise 182.